Hey guys, Nintendrew here. Super Mario 64 is an absolute classic, a true Nintendo staple, and no doubt most of you have plenty of fond memories of the game. But you may be surprised to learn that the title, which came out in 1996, actually had a Japan-exclusive update over a year after its initial launch. This is Super Mario 64 Shindo Edition, and in this video we'll be diving in to talk a little bit about Super Mario 64's history, and to see what new changes and features made it into this beloved game's forgotten update. So, let's check it out! Alright, so here it is, Super Mario 64 Shindo version, and just so you can see the difference in labeling side by side, here is a photo of the original Japanese cartridge. As I mentioned before, this update was launched exclusively in Japan in July of 1997, over a year after the game's release. The full title of this release is Super Mario 64 Shindo Pak Taiyo version, and that will be important to know here in just a moment, so let's first take a look at some of the new features added in this version. So the title Super Mario 64 Shindo Pak Taiyo version literally translates to Super Mario 64 Rumble Pack compatible version, and this release is indeed compatible with the N64 Rumble Pack, as indicated by the new icon in the bottom right corner of the title screen. Of course, Rumble support is far from the only thing changed in this version, but it is perhaps the most apparent addition. While we're here at the title screen, we might as well check out one other quick feature here. If you press the Z button on the Shindo version's title screen, you'll trigger a small easter egg where copies of Mario's face fill the background of the screen. Next, let's talk about some of the gameplay changes this update introduced. First, it's important to understand that this version of the game came after the international release, and includes many of the changes that we were already used to in Europe and America, but were brand new for this Japanese release. For example, the original Japanese version of Mario 64 was missing many of the voice clips we got in North America. Hello! Okie dokie! Let's go! Game over! Oh. Oh. Yippee! <laughs> All of these voice clips and more were not part of the original Japanese release, so of course the Shindo version was Japan's first time experiencing these new lines in the game. Another voice difference is found in the game's Bowser fights. In this case, the Shindo version added an exclusive voice clip played when throwing Bowser long distances. Bye bye In the international release, as you might recall, Mario would say, So long, eh, Bowser! But because Bowser's name is King Koopa in Japan, this new line was introduced to replace it. However, if this new version sounds familiar to you, you may have heard it return in a more recent title. This buh bye voice clip was reused for both Super Mario 64 DS and New Super Mario Bros. for when players would close their DS to put it in sleep mode. Bye bye Another feature we were already used to, if you could call it that, is that the Shindo update added the ability to press either A or B to talk to NPCs or to read signs. The original version actually required you to press the B button for these interactions. A very minor change, but definitely more convenient. And finally, the developers made one more change to gameplay for this release, which honestly feels a bit random and kind of unnecessary. For some reason, if you jump onto a tree in the Shindo version, Mario whips around to face the camera. Whereas in every other version of Mario 64, he just grabs on and turns a short distance. As far as I can tell, nobody's really sure exactly why they decided to make this change, but at least for a casual playthrough, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. However, for speedrunners, the Shindo edition has some other implications. Alright, we got him. Come on. Come on, dude! Did Nintendo patch this or something? Well, actually, yes, they did. What? Yep, the Shindo edition brought with it a series of bug fixes, including a patch for the infamous backwards long jump glitch, which is used in a number of Super Mario 64 speedrun routes. In addition, as with the game's updated voice clips, the Shindo version saw many bug fixes which were already present in the earlier international release. For instance, in the original version, if Mario collects a coin when his coin counter has already maxed out at 999, his number of extra lives will also be set to 999, which the game is unable to handle and displays as M25. This is likely due to a copy and paste accident in the game's original code, something along these lines. The programmers probably intended to write, if lives are greater than 100, set lives back to 100, and if coins are greater than 999, set coins back to 999, in order to cap off the maximum. However, if the code were instead to have one variable swapped to read, if coins greater than 999, set lives to 999, we would expect this exact behavior. Another bug fix was implemented in the earlier Bowser fights. Again, you most likely didn't experience this bug if you played the game outside of Japan, but in the original version, when collecting the key Bowser drops when defeated, it unexpectedly disappears and is replaced with a star just as you might see in any other level. The Shindo version updated the animation to match the international release. Another bug which was possible to find in this area is a visual glitch where if you were to defeat Bowser and enter manual camera mode to look somewhere while collecting the key, 
Mario's head would stay in place making for some pretty hilarious poses. And yes, this means in the original release you could make Mario dab. Hey kids, remember Nintendo says dabbing is rated E for everyone. Ugh. So of course that wouldn't fly, so this final version fixed that bug as well. No more dabbing, thank goodness. Alright guys, I think that covers pretty much everything. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Shindo edition of Super Mario 64, and if you did, please consider subscribing to Nintendo for all sorts of cool gaming content, and make sure to share the video with any friends who might find it interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey guys, thanks again for checking out the video and for making it all the way to the end. Hope you enjoyed. As always, I've got links to all my social media in the description below. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, that sort of thing. And if you'd like to help out even more, I've got a link to my Patreon on the right side of your screen. Otherwise, I hope you'll look out for the next video. Take care.